Hi everyone, welcome back to ASFT Chemistry. What I'm going to go through with you here is how we form an amide bond or link, which we can also call a peptide bond between two amino acids or the functional groups on one amino acid, but we'll get to that in good time. Now specifically we have to concentrate on these two functional groups. Now I could list through the R groups all the way around here, but it doesn't matter too much. All I'm trying to draw your attention to at the moment is we have an NH2 and we have a COOH through here and we're going to form a bond now between the nitrogen and the carbon just here which is formed in a condensation reaction. Now a condensation reaction then is one that is going to release some H2O like so to form a bond between this nitrogen and the carbon. If we take two of the functional groups and draw them out fully then this H2O loss can be very well seen. There we go. Now what we're looking at here, if you're looking between the two, we're literally looking at taking the HHO from between these two and creating a bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. And so the bond would look, maintaining an H on the nitrogen, I think some people forget about that every so often. There you go. And obviously then some plus H2O, as we mentioned a few times now, is kicked out because this is a type of condensation reaction. Now, if you look then at the repeat unit that would be left behind for this, this isn't an example of the repeating unit. An example of the repeating unit would demonstrate the two functional groups, but unbonded at either hand, just like this. So you could see we've got these sort of open bonds here, sort of these dead arms just hanging off the side. And the MR of this would be uh, one, H2O less than the monomer. So it's a good way of trying to spot certain patterns with the subject. It's a good way of seeing if you've got the right answer at the end or anything along those lines. Let's have a quick look at some examples of this then. So let's pick um, an alpha amino acid. So remember an alpha amino acid is one which has the carboxylic acid group and the amino group, or the amine group, on the same carbon like so. We've got an H there. And let's just uh, introduce some real clarity to what we're drawing. Let's put a phenyl group just here like that, okay? So I'm going to do some examples based around this. First example then, let's have a look if we were to polymerize this amino acid and make one long chain sequence of just that amino acid over and over. Let's have a look at the repeating unit. Since I've mentioned the repeating unit down here, it'd be a good example now to show that and represent this feature. So what we need to have is at either end, we need to have the functional groups that we're referring to. So much on this page. There they are. And then this carbon in the middle, you can see it's got the H and the benzene ring structure here. Like that. And there it is, our repeat unit. Now the repeat unit or the repeating unit, however you want to describe it, should here, if we added it up, it would be one H2O less than the monomer, the amino acid that I used up here. So what are the alternatives? Well, the alternative then is, kind of mentioned something similar to this earlier, is that two of these could actually just connect together at each functional group. Now that can be difficult to um, just imagine. So let's have a look at it drawn out. I'm gonna do my best here to not use too much of the page for this one. I've got the sort of the top end here that we had before. And what I'm saying is, is rather than just connecting these out like a repeating unit, we're going to connect them directly to another monomer of this amino acid. So this is going to connect to a carbon just here, and this is going to connect to a nitrogen. Just going to put that a bit skew with just there, but it's okay. Like so. And there we go. So what's actually happened there is two of these have clipped together and hopefully you can see that because we used quite an obvious branching or chain just there so you can see the connections. We can see how we've got the nitrogen of one connected to the carbon from the carbonyl group of the other and vice versa on the other side. This actually came up in a recent upper six assessment and it's an interesting point to make because the examiner, OCR in particular, seems to go in this direction quite a lot. One of the other alternatives that could actually happen, and we are assuming here, by the way, that we have only got one amino acid. Of course, this repeat unit would look different if we had two amino acids, and we'd have to be able to decipher that. 
But the other option we have now is to have one of the amino acid make almost a ring structure with itself. So rather than connecting this nitrogen to a mo another molecule's carbon and this carbon to another molecule's nitrogen, why not connect them to each other? And what you actually end up with, which is a bit weird to look at at first, is you end up with the three atoms connected like so. This nitrogen still has the H, just like it's done every single time. This carbon still has the C double bond O. And then here, is the middle part of the chain. Now you can see here, these are three really big differences. How can we tell them apart? Well, these two would be difficult to tell apart unless you were told that this was specifically a polymer and that this was the repeating unit and this was just a molecule that was achieved. So obviously that would make it different because they actually have the same MR. This one here, however, doesn't have that MR. It has a very different MR. So it would be double what this one would be. So this would be um, like the monomer twice, but with two H2Os missing. These two, however, would be difficult to decipher. What you'd have to do is you'd have to read the question really, really carefully to see if they referred to it as a polymer or a molecule. They could refer to it as a molecule of the polymer, really shouldn't, but they could. And then, of course, they would be referring to this here because it's the only polymer feature that is on this page at the moment. I hope that clears up any questions you have or any confusion you have around how these two functional groups, so our amino acid and its two functional groups of so the NH2 and the carboxylic acid group, how they can form an amide bond or a peptide bond or an amide link, however you want to describe it, and how we can have alternatives based on a repeating unit, two of them connecting together or one of them forming a sort of weird ring structure just there. Make sure you watch the rest of the playlist and happy revising.